Welcome back to Oracle of Ages Cursed, everybody. I'm Colorful Arnie, and we're exploring more of the Mermaid's Cave today, this time in the past. So, first room, we just got a couple of shrouded stop buses here, nothing too much to worry about. Thankfully, the candles aren't shooting fireballs at us in the past. Also, you'll notice that the mermaid is broken up now on the map, and we all know what to do in rooms like this. Rax Fever. Same dungeon music in the past as it is in the present. Aw. Oh. Stop running from your fate. Haha. <laughs> and we get the compass! Yes, there's a separate compass for the past versus the present. You also notice that it's not purple in the past, it's yellow. Oh boy, those are bubbles. And they don't damage you if they hit you, but instead, if they hit you, you can't use your sword for several seconds. That's arguably worse. But they're not as bad as they are in Zelda 1, where, at least in the second quest, sometimes if you got hit by a bubble, you just permanently couldn't use the sword until you got to a fairy fountain, or got hit by a blue bubble. So, we don't have a key, unfortunately, even though we've got keys in the present. We can't use them in the past. Apparently our keys do not travel through time with us. At least not small keys. And oh boy, the candles are back. Fortunately, they're a bit easier in this room because you've got the pits that are separating you, so you can shoot across the pits and you don't have to worry about them so much. Oh, that was pretty well timed. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the third over there. Go for this door, and much like in the uh, present version of the dungeon, we can just throw a single scent seed down here, and the monsters will walk off a cliff like an idiot. There's the key we're looking for. Uh, this song is kind of repetitive. I'm not a huge fan of the Mermaid Cave soundtrack. Oh no, okay. This introduces blue whiz robes, and they are the worst. They have a ton of HP, they can vanish and disappear at, like, will, uh, and they're constantly shooting at you. Thankfully, I killed him pretty easily, but they are nasty. So we can put the Cane of Samaria block on that side, but we're going to need one of these pots in order to get it on, uh push the switch down on this side. Ooh, it had a heart underneath it. Very nice. Get out the feather and away we go. Yeah, you'll notice that, like, it's very... S the past and present versions of the dungeon are very similar, but they have subtle differences. Oh, uh, not a never blue wizard robe! No! Oh, no. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Uh, don't kill me. Wizards are just worry me a lot. Oh, floor masters are one thing, but floor masters plus blue wizards not a good combo. All right, this is kind of a jerk move. You know how like the wall was cracked in the present version of the dungeon. Well, yeah! They just have to expect you to remember that, and you have to bomb a totally normal-looking wall. And I see no reason why this turntable is even here. Like, seriously, it was only there to make you take longer to get through this room. Ooh, fairy! Ah, uh, well, heart works all the same. And we've reached a dead end of this dungeon. We can't go in the water, and we don't have a key, and we can't explore any of the rest of it, so we're gonna have to save and quit. That'll warp us to the beginning of the dungeon. And now that we've done some stuff there, we need to go back to the present. And there's more stuff we can do in the present now. Yeah, because we blew up some walls in the past, now there's more we can do in the present. 
So first off, we can go for that hole, which was not there when we explored the present for the first time. And we can light some candles. And hopefully avoid them killing us. The candle enemies are just very... tough enemies to get past. Oh, no chest? Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot about these veins! These are the giant spike traps. You do not want to touch them. You will take quite a bit of damage. They look pretty awesome, though. And we've got keys aplenty in the present, so... Oh, that's right, nothing over there. I love how you keep needing to use the switch hook, even after the fourth dungeon. It, it's such a fun item to use. Get out of here. That's what Aegis does great, like, the dungeon items you keep using in future dungeons all the time. And we get the compass for the, uh, present as well. Alright. Let's get out the feather, we got some jumping to do. Link's always so stylish when he's jumping. He has to do a front flip every time. Thank you, Keese. Oh no, not Blue Wiz Robes. Get out of the room, get out of the room. Alright, oh great, Beemos. Beemos, Wiz Robes, and Gibdos. This is not a fun combination. And we're about to show off why the Boomerang's so good. Boomerang can just stun Gibdos in their tracks. Ow. Beemos has got a. I can't tell if it's got a really good aim or a really bad aim. I was expecting it to have a perfect aim, and it hit me anyways. Ten rupees, not bad. Let's get out of here. Yeah, nothing can hurt Beemos or, like, stun it in any way. It's very annoying. Oh boy, okay, more Gibdos. Boomerang may, uh, trivializes fighting them, though. Okay, I am not a fan of this room. It's complete random chance uh, whether the lever you pull will give you the chest or summon snakes. And it changes every time you pull it. Possibly. It could change. So if you've got really bad luck like I do, you could be here all day. Wow, second try? Not bad. Now we get the boss key. Ow. I hate Blue Wiz Robes. They're even worse in Zelda 1, though. Because in Zelda 1, your sword is nowhere near as good. There we go. I just realized we can just save and quit and warp to the beginning of the dungeon again. That'll be a nice shortcut. Alright. We're gonna go get a magic potion. Okay, I finally got my magic potion, and we're back, ready to take on the mini-boss. Trust me, if you're playing a cursed playthrough, you want a potion for the mini-boss. You pretty much need a potion for the mini-boss, to be perfectly honest. Oh, uh, that's right, nothing. You can't go for there. Whew. Yeah, the, the mini-boss of this dungeon is e probably the single most unfair mini-boss in the entire game. Especially if you're doing a cursed playthrough. So we gotta get for this room, and because we blew up that, like, totally normal-looking wall in the past, well, that wall is now blown up in the present as well. Kind of a jerk move, and this is the room of turntables, and I just realized that's why there's the turntable in the future, so it at least kind of resembles what it's like in the... I'm sorry, I got that confused. That's why there's the turntable in the past. Okay. So yeah, there's just a lot of turntable turning in this area. Ooh, sweet. Ember seeds. Thank you. Not sure why they're giving me ember seeds, but alright. So for some simple turntable manipulation, we can go over here. Kill a Gibdo or two. No big deal. This is why I was so desperate to get the boomerang. Alright, and in this chest, another small key, which we need to reach the mini-boss. Uh, 
Ugh, stupid Gibdo, out of my way. I've got a boomerang, you're not gonna win that battle. Alright, which way do we go? I think we go up here, I wanna say. Actually, wait, does this lead to a dead end? Yeah, that leads to a dead end. Yeah, what's nice is those skull-like bubbles over there, the yellow and black ones, you can just insta-kill through boomerang. And that's the only way to kill them. Alright, we gotta manipulate that first turn table now. Yeah. Not a big fan of turntable puzzles myself. Alright. So once we kill these Gibdos, we'll be ready for the mini-boss, and... <sighs> Let's just say, okay, if you've watched my Oracle of Seasons mini-boss, it's the same mini-boss as the one from Ancient Ruins. The one that cost me like a half hour of play time on that uh, <laughs> playthrough. This boss is pretty much just random chance, I'm just gonna say that. Like, if he wants to kill you, he's going to kill you. <sighs> Wish me luck. Because... This guy's, like, impossible to damage if he, if his AI is just really good. I hate bosses that rely on many, uh, a lot of luck. I'm amazed you've come so far. I thought you a harmless turtle, but I miscalculated. At any rate, I'll finish this soon. So, this is Vire. You know, the guy who played Donkey Kong with us. So if he's feeling nice, he'll just do this, where he'll dash right next to us and we can slash him with our sword. Wow, he's being really nice. Ouch, pesky kid, take this! Oh. Oh my gosh, he's being so nice. Whoa! I have never seen him act this nice. Normal- Yeah, that's normally what he does, is he'll like, go next to you and then shoot fireballs at you like that, and then just run away. But wowie zowie. Oh my gosh! He's being so nice! Bully, that's it! I'm serious! Okay, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but spin attacks deal extra damage, so you want to spin attack enemies for the most part. Uh, okay, so that's my magic potion. Take that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, if he doesn't want you to hit him, like, you're not going to hit him. There's just no way. Uh, oh man, uh... Fortunately, most of your fi his fireballs you can knock out of the sky. Please, come on. Just be a little nicer. I cannot believe what good luck I'm having for this first fight. <gasps> oh my gosh! Yes! Please. I might one-shot this guy. I one-shotted him! Im Im Possible! Not once, but twice! Veron! Onyx! I'm sorry. Goodbye! Die! I can't believe I one-shotted that guy! That guy, oh my... In Oracle of Seasons, he cost me a half hour of play time because of how annoying he was. That was amazing. That was amazing! <laughs> yes! Yes! Alright. Okay, so this next room, this is a tough puzzle. You need to throw a bomb at this block just at the right time, because if you throw it too late, it falls off a cliff. If you throw it too early, it will not blow up the block. And I got that first try as well. Oh my gosh! And we get the dungeon item, the mermaid suit. Now we can swim in deep waters. Press the control pad to swim, B to dive, and A to use items. So, this is an interesting item. So now we can swim in the ocean and the really deep waters. And we can also swim a lot faster now due to being able to tap the control pad. And we can use items underwater. The problem with it is, if you're playing on the virtual console release of this game for the 3DS, the control pad is terrible. And the uh, track pad is really bad for using the mermaid suit as well. So, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. And we're also going to be using that suit a lot. Like, in the upcoming future. Just like, we're going to be using it a lot. <sighs> I still can't believe that I one-shotted Vire. And I just realized, yeah, I don't need to be wandering around the dungeon anymore. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's get out of here. And yeah, nice little sea now. We can swim around in the deep waters. And yeah, we can dive underwater now. And you'll notice we're a lot faster. And we get a rain. Yeah, like, tapping the control pad will make you a lot faster, if you've got a good control pad. But it is- it does definitely take some getting used to. And that's where we're gonna leave the episode off for today, I think. Thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Artie, and if you tune in next time, we're gonna be finishing up the Mermaid's Cave. It's gonna be great. I guarantee you the boss is not going to be nearly as bad as the mini-boss. I still can't believe I have one shot at fire! Anyways, thank you again for watching, and as always, have a great day, and God bless.